Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo. In this video, I'll be going over how to set up and install your APC UPS backup device so it safely shuts down your PC during a power outage. And before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. I'll start with setting up the APC unit. First, we want to get it ready, plugged in and fully charged. Before we plug anything into it, we need to do a few things before we plug it in. Check it all over just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the unit. Next, we need to take the battery out, flip it around and put it back in. There should be a sticker on the unit that shows you that you should do this. If, it, if, if your model requires this, it'll show you on a sticker before usually covering one of the plugs. So before you plug it in or anything like that, you want to make sure that the battery's in there correctly. I definitely suggest to do this first thing you get it, plug it in and let it charge before using it is recommended. So that's what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it in and leave it overnight. Make sure it's fully charged before we plug anything into it or start using it. I flipped the battery, plugged it in and let it charge overnight. Now it's ready for us to plug our setup into it. The unit come with a cord that goes to your computer. We will need this plugged in for us to use the software. So keep it closed as we will need it later on. So far, we should have it charged and everything plugged into it. If you don't see any issues, no building fault light or battery error readout on the LCD screen on the front of the device, we are ready to install the software and set it up to shut down the PC in case of a power outage. First, we need to plug in the included USB to USB and serial data port cord that looks like this. Plug it into the back of the APC where it says data port. It looks similar to an ethernet port, so you should definitely see it. It'll be very visible, except for it will say data port. When it's plugged in, Windows should prompt you with a notification saying the device is connected. So we'll do that now. It came up with a little Windows notification, a little pop-up there. That should pop up first thing that you've plugged it in. And after that pop-up, the next pop-up should show up a few seconds later that says your device is ready to use. And it should tell you like it's your backup XPS, etc. All right, and another place it should show up is in your device manager. In your device manager, it should show up in the batteries now. And it should come up as HUD USB battery. And you should also notice an icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your computer that shows up like a battery in a laptop does. So if you've had a laptop before, you've seen this before, it'll just show up like that. So now it looks like that your computer has a battery. So if everything went smoothly, you should be here and everything here should be working correctly. It should show your percentage of the battery that's left, that's plugged in, if it's charging, and it should show up in your device manager. In some cases, you may need to install the drivers before Windows will see the APC UPS device. I'll cover installing the software and where to find it. We can register our product and get the software at the same time. I highly suggest doing this now. Well, we need to be there for the software anyways, so you should head over to www.warranty.apc.com and register your product. Once you're here, it'll just look like this here and ask you to register your product. And you can go through and fill out your information and put in your model number of the, of the model that you got. Make sure that you register it here. Once you have this here done, you will have an account set up and the devices will show that you have on the website and all you need to do is remember your model number as you'll need that later on. But from here, you do not have to register an account or register your product to get to the download. All you need to do is click on the support, go down here to where it says product, documentation and software and you can click on the software and firmware. Now, you will only need the software if you plan to use it to monitor the backup unit and shut down your computer. If everything went smooth so far, the LED display readout of the battery and the battery and all the information that it shows in window, you pretty much have all that you need. The software mostly is just there for the features to like safely shut down your computer and monitor things. And we definitely want that. It's, de it's such a lifesaver if you leave your computer online. But let's just scroll down here on the right hand side on the support page. And we'll come to a spot here with a drop down menu that says hardware. In here we're gonna, we wanna type in the model number that is related to our product. For us this is BX1500M. Now, if this shows more than one product, just double check your model number and refer to it. I know that mine is 
the one without the dash LM60. So make sure that you double check and select the correct one. Once it's done, it'll load up a page with an option on it for you to download. This is the software that we're gonna need to be able to monitor things. So we just click the download. If you have two options, you can just read off here what they do or check the documentation to make sure that you got the correct one. But you should have this power chute personal edition. We're just gonna leave it as is. <laughs> All right, now that it's downloaded, we just wanna click it here to start the install process. And this is gonna be like any other app. We just need to click yes here. And it's going to ask us a few things here and we're just gonna install it like any other app. We're just gonna click next. In here, it's gonna be the agreement. We're just gonna, you can read that if you want. We're just gonna click the accept and click next again. Now in this spot, it gives you a default install location. I definitely suggest using it. You do not wanna to have to go find this here later on. So we're just gonna click next again. This is just only gonna take a few seconds. Okay, the first thing that's gonna come up is gonna say data collection, in, enable the software. We're gonna click okay. And on this here next page, it's gonna ask us to register our product online again. If you've already done this, make sure you check that box off so that it's not checked. You do not wanna have a check mark in there and click it and register your product twice or just load up an unnecessary web page. So make sure you check that and click finish. Okay, it's gonna give you a prompt here that says energy cost to set up. You can click here to set up the energy cost. Okay, this here window showed up off screen. This is what popped up. This is what popped up the energy cost configuration when you click on it. If it doesn't show up, you can get into it later, but your electricity bill displays the rate charge in kilowatts. Um, enter the rate so that you have your power in here. Where I live, it's about nine cents. That's probably accurate. We're just gonna click okay. If you pay 12, 13 cents for power, Per kilowatt, uh, just check your power bill if you want it this. If you want to have this here, have like accurate calculations of how much power your whole entire setup connected to your unit is actually costing you in power per month. Make sure that you click in an accurate amount, and you can do that just by checking your power bill. Ours is nine cents, so we're just going to leave it here. Most likely, it's going to be ten, twelve, or thirteen any other place. So just click OK once it's set to what you want. You don't have to set that. It's just something I suggest so that you can check how much kilowatts per day, how much dollars it's costing you. It will all show in this here app we've just installed. Okay, and if it didn't open the energy cost, you can click the energy cost right here to open it back up and change it at any time. So this is very easy to change and modify so that you can keep an accurate calculations of your power cost that's connected to your setup. That's one great thing about this here software. Next, we just want to go down here. We're mostly just mainly looking for the ability to shut down our PC correctly and safely. So we're going to go down here to the configurations and we're going to jump right to runtime. Now this is the options that allows you to shut down your PC and it is on default. First thing you install this here software, this one here is going to be checked by default and this is what will happen. And it will shut down my PC when the time left on the battery backup power is five minutes. You can change this to any amount, five, six, seven, eight, or you can change this to preserve battery power and have it shut down five minutes after the power goes out or one minute. This one allows you to have one to five. The other one allows you to have five to eight. If that's all you want it, you're done and that's all you need to do. It is suggested though, if you wanna have it save your work during a power outage, it's suggested that you use the hibernate or sleep. So you'll have to turn this on in Windows. And to do this is actually not really hard. All we need to do is open up our Windows settings. So in System, Power and Sleep Options, and we wanna click on Additional Power Settings. In here, we can go all the way to the top and we can choose what the power button does. We can just click the Change Settings that are currently on available. And we wanna click that and then we want to check mark the hibernate and click save changes that when something does happen if it powers down the computer your computer is going to automatically go into hibernate now that's just a very low power state so if you have power off for a really long time and your computer shuts off with one minute left your power unit should last you days that it should save your all your computer stuff in hibernate so that's just something to do if this doesn't always work i've already had issues with this myself where it powered off and what i had open but my unit just shut off all the way because the power kept blinking over and over again. It powered down the unit. So when the unit shut down, I did end up losing everything I had in hibernation mode. So you can change this here to hibernate mode right here when you press the start button, the power button as well. That's another thing you can do so that it goes into hibernate or sleep mode, but it is suggested. It does say on the website that it is suggested for you to use hibernate 
so that you don't lose anything on your computer. But again, that's not a fail safe. That's not proven. That's not, that doesn't always save your work, but that's just how you would turn it on. Make sure that your hibernate's on. And I wanted to make sure that I added that to the video so that if you are trying to use this to save your work, this is how you would do it. It doesn't go and save your work by clicking the save button. It saves your work by shutting down your computer in a hibernate or sleep mode instead of having it hard kick off with the power. So it only potentially saves your stuff. So please take that with a grain of salt and do not rely on it. Don't leave your computer just because you have one of these with your work open, not saved. That would definitely be a bad idea. But that's all there is to it. The software is installed and your computer is protected that much better. It should safely shut down now when the power goes out and it just give you a little bit of peace of mind and hopefully it will save your save any documents that you don't have saved if it happens to happen when you're not home. And like I said, there's a few tabs here. There's some things that you can go through that you can monitor your power, check your current stats. You can see how much loads on the battery, how many watts you're using out of how many total, the volts, just a lot of different things. You can, I definitely suggest running the self test, given that there go as well as checking your energy usage. I really like these things and it does come up with your energy cost, your battery time, how many minutes you have before it will be dead. The power source being AC powered, utility powered. All right, but that's everything there is to it, guys. Like I said, this is that's all there is to it. Once you have this here, you can just click it, close, and restart your computer and not think about it again. Just make sure that you have it and leave it plugged in. If it's, if it's not plugged in, it probably won't end up shutting down your computer quite correctly. So make sure it's plugged in with the USB to data port cable. That's the last thing I can think of, guys. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching, guys.